Hey guys, it's Chris. I come again with a new tutorial. This is an STM32 related video and I'm so excited for getting started with these cool dev boards, especially the Nucleo 32 ones, which are getting more and more popular. As you saw in the intro of the video, today we will create a customized breadboard friendly module that we will control from an STM32L011 MCU based board. The purpose of making such module is mainly to keep an arranged looking of the breadboard setup, so we will get rid of the extra wires and the big components and we will stick with small part sizes and keep everything connected in one compact area. The module will be designed around a CD4515 integrated circuit which belongs to the 16 bits decoders. This circuit will allow you to drive 16 GPIO using only 4 pins from your microcontroller through some preset combinations that you can find in the truth table provided in the circuit datasheet. Any changed status of the A, B, C, D inputs will produce a changing of the output status. Initially, we have all outputs set to high logic level as long as the inhibit pin is set to high. Once we turn it to low logic level and all selection pins are low, we get the first bit S0 turn it to low. And these are all the possible selection combinations. At this point, we can define 5 control inputs, so we will need 5 GPIO pins from our STM Nucleo board to interact with this decoder. I want some LEDs to watch the selection input status and the circuit outputs so all in all we will need 20 LEDs. I move it to Altium Designer and I grab it the decoder circuit from the online library. Then I place it these LEDs as indicators of the output status and these ones as input status indicators. All these LEDs and resistors are 0402 package components so it will not take large space in our module. I then place it these seal heater connectors to give access to the circuit pins through the breadboard connection. Of course, I provided access to all the circuit pins. Now it comes the PCB design. Maybe the most important part of this design is how to keep the module breadboard friendly. Simply by respecting the breadboard pin-to-pin -pin spacing, which is set to 1 inch, it means 2.54 millimeters. I place it the seal heater to the sides of the board outline with a 15.24 mm spacing to make the module fits in 6 inches pin spacing. After that, I drag it the decoder to the middle of the module outline, then I arrange it these small LEDs and resistors inside the PCB layout. Routing this module is a gameplay shortly after setting the design rules to match the PCB manufacturer capabilities. As you can see from the 3D view, the module has a real compact size with so many components that won't take big space on the breadboard. Just 6 days to get the PCBs manufactured by JLC PCB, and now I have my modules ready for assembly. Make sure that you are using the appropriate tools for assembly like a soldering iron with a pointy end solder tip and a small cross section solder core for these small parts packages.
I have the module very well assembled and it fits properly to the breadboard. Now we run the STM32 Cube IDE to start the first STM project. The first step is selecting the board that we are dealing with. In my case, it is the Nucleo 32 STM32 L011. You don't have to write the full board name on the search toolbar of the selector, just write what comes after STM32. Here we are dealing with the L011K4 version, which is already indicated as a Nucleo family. I like it the idea that the IDE will download and extract all the needed packages and this is considered as time saving comparing to KL IDE. Once we have all the packages ready, the selected MCU will show up, then we do the pinout configuration from this graphical view. Remember that we have 5 outputs for our module, so I selected these pins which are labeled as A, B, C, D for selection pins and this one that I call it enable for inhibit pin. We generate the code for this configuration, then we start dealing with the HAL library. I made this for loop to select one output of the 16 pins of the decoder every half a second. It means every half a second we will visualize a new combination on the selection inputs and an increment of the selected output. Here is the wiring of the module to the Nucleo board depending on the configuration that we have made and you can see that it looks so neat, no extra wires and everything looks arranged. I then connected the Nucleo to my computer through USB and start debugging. As you can see guys, the blue LEDs are indicating the combination changing for A, B, C, D selectors and these orange LEDs are showing which output of the 16 bits is selected. I highly recommend this method for prototyping and I will show you in the future videos more of my made modules so stay tuned. Do not miss to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more electronics videos. One last thing. Make sure that you are doing electronics every day. It was Chris. See you next time.